cross-examination is the examination of the witness by the opponent after the direct examination. It is both a weapon to destroy or weaken the testimony of the opponent's witness on one hand, or a tool to build up or strengthen a party's case on the other hand. Hence, there is what we call as constructive cross-examination or destructive cross-examination, depending on your purpose as the lawyer of the party. Primarily, cross-examination is an essential part of the right guaranteed by no less than our own constitution. That is the right to procedural due process, particularly the right of a party to confront witnesses against him face to face. The essence, however, is not actual cross-examination per se, but that a party be given the opportunity to cross-examine. Hence, where there is opportunity given, this constitutional mandate is thus satisfied. The following scenario portrays a conduct of cross-examination of witnesses in a case. In this case, we took and patterned the role play from the August 22, 2000 case of People of the Philippines versus Zing Bayou, GR number 127-580. This is a case highlighting the violation of the Dangerous Drugs Act of 1972 as amended by the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 or otherwise known as Republic Act 6425. Just a little caveat, we tweaked the original transcript of the cross-examination part of this case to make sure that we highlight the cross-examination part for classroom presentation purposes. In the morning of October 24, 2019, a police informant codenamed Stardust arrived at the Narcotics Command for Narcom in Camp Ricardo Papa Bikutan Taguig and informed Police Senior Inspector Franklin Moises Mabanag of two Chinese nationals who were supposedly big-time drug pushers. She claimed to have regular contact with one of the alleged drug pushers named Carlos Tan T and Mary Ann T. Acting on the information furnished by Stardust, the narco agents organized a bypass operation to apprehend the reputed drug pushers who are herein appellants. Recovered from the accused, is a shabu having a weight of one kilo and some regulated drugs. The accused, in their defense, countered that no buy bus operation took place. They denied selling any shabu and they have accused the police of extortion as they were asked an amount of money in exchange for the freedom of the accused. The defendant presented a car wash girl named Norlita, whom the accused allegedly requested to card and wash the car that they left in the parking area before the bypass operation took place. Norlita testified that she allegedly saw the incident when the accused were apprehended by the bypass team. In the examination of Norlita, she testified that appellants did not arrive in a taxi but in a car driven by appellant Carlos Tanti. That is contrary to the testimony of the apprehending police officers. In resolving this argument, it would be helpful to examine the entire script of Norlita's cross-examination and the circumstances surrounding questioning appellants find so objectionable. After the direct examination, the prosecutor began the cross-examination by asking the witness who requested her to testify. 
Lordita answered that it was Mary Ann T, the wife of appellant Carlos T. Asked when she was requested to testify, Norlita replied she could not remember anymore. So the prosecutor continued. But you are sure that when you came to this court this morning, Miss Witness, she accompanied you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And Neither you received a subpoena before coming to this court to testify this morning. Is that correct? No, sir. Who did she pick you up? From RT subdivision, sir. Where is this RT subdivision? In BBB, sir. In Venezuela? Yes, Your Honor. After the incidents, Miss Witness, you did not even. No, sir, no, sir. Go direct to the point. Yes, Your Honor. What is the date of trial? December 9, 2019, sir. And you testify today, Miss Witness. With that being said, that it was only on December 9, 2019 that you came to know that you are going to testify in this case? I was told by the woman by the name of Mary Answer. Is it your testimony that you only came to know on December 9, 2019 that you are going to become a witness in this case? Objection, Your Honor. The witness has already answered that question. Objection sustained. Go to your next question. Yes, Your Honor. Prior to December 9, 2019, is it your testimony that you came to know Mary Anthony? Yes, sir. And you have talked to Mary Anthony relative to this case prior to December 9, 2019? Is that correct? No, sir. I accompanied here in our house. Miss Witness, when did you accompany Mary Anthony to your residence? When I was washing cars, sir. And when was that? I cannot remember, sir. So, prior to December 9th... Objection, Your Honor. The question is no longer relevant. Objection, Your Honor. Okay. Answer the question. I, I cannot remember, sir. Come on, Miss Witness. You could not remember three days prior to December 9, 2019? Three weeks per half? Objection, Your Honor. Leading question. Objection sustained. Next question, please. Tell to the court, Miss Witness, how many cars did you happen to wash and watch? When the accused got arrested? Four cars, sir. Is it safe to say that you only washed and watched four cars from, let's say, from the morning until the evening? Yes, sir. Is it safe to say that the colors of the cars are white, black, and blue? Objection, Your Honor. That is a leading question. Objection sustained. Refresh your question, counsel. Okay, Your Honor. What are the colors of the cars that you saw when the accused were arrested? 
it is white, light green, and blue, sir. Blue. And would you say that you knew the owners of the cars? No, sir. By the way, Miss Witness, how many cars did you wash and wash for the day? It depends upon the amount given by the customer, sir. So let's take, for example, in a day, and you wash and wash four cars. How much do you actually be paid by the owners? 800 pesos, sir. For each car? For only one per car, sir. So that means to say that you have been paid 800 pesos for four cars? Yeah, yes, sir. Is it your testimony now that you have been paid 200 pesos for each of the car that you Objection, have Objection, Your Honor. The question is already answered. Objection overruled. Answer the question. Yes, sir. Well then, is it safe to say, Ms. Witness, that you received anything today for coming in? Objection, Your Honor. The question is no longer relevant. Your Honor, I was just trying to explain maybe the, the witness has been convinced to come here to testify without her knowledge. Objection overruled. Witness, you have to answer the question. No, sir. So, is it safe to say that this person, Mary Auntie, may have paid you to come to testify today? Objection, Your Honor. Leading question. Your Honor. Okay. Objection sustained. To your next question, Counsel. Okay, one more. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Witness, is it your testimony now that you came to this court without receiving any subpoena and yet you abandoned your work as a car wash personnel and you did not receive even a single cent? That doesn't make any sense. Actually, do, 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 Lester. And how much were you being paid? Objection, Your Honor. Leading question. Objection of role. Answer the question, witness. None yet, sir. How much did she promise you? Counsel, counsel. Clarify your question. Oh, yes, yes, Your Honor. She might not know the person. I was referring to Mary Auntie, Your Honor, the one who brought you here to testify. How much did she pay you? No, no, sir. Witness, you have testified earlier that you have received, after all, a payment for coming in to testify today. Counsel, I have not heard her say that a while ago. Refresh your question. What I'm trying to say, Your Honor, is that she might have been convinced to come to testify to the court today. So, why is she testifying differently now? Counsel, recess for a while. Ms. Witness, is it your testimony that it was Mary Andy who brought you to this court to testify? Yes, yes, sir. And how much did she promise you? Um, it, it depends on my earning for the day, sir. You have testified earlier, Ms. Witness. How much did she? How much did she? even promised to give you any amount that you could think of? Objection, Your Honor. She said her earning for today. Objection sustained. Go to the next question, counsel. All right, Your Honor. So you testified today that you met Mary Anki at the parking lot on the day of December 9, 2019. Is that right? Yes, sir. 
And do you also agree with me that you have been fetched by Mary and T at your house in RT subdivision in Valenzuela City, rather? Yes, sir. Why, Miss Witness, I do not understand. Why do you still need to accompany her to your house when you can just bring her to your workplace? So, so that I can relate to her the incident, sir? Come on, Miss Witness. Why? Why do you still need to accompany her to your house? I'm just... Why not just bring her to your workplace and get interrogated there or talk about the case there? Objection, Your Honor. That is a leading question. Objection overall. Answer the question. Did she give you something on the day of December 9, 2019? Oh, objection, Your Honor. That is a leading question. Objection sustained. Next question, please. Okay, Your Honor. So what time did you leave the parking area then? In the, in the afternoon, sir. What time? 2 p.m., 3 p.m.? Could you cite what time? Could you remember? Uh, about 4 o'clock on the afternoon, sir. So... What time do you usually leave the parking area? Or what time do you usually sign off from your workplace? Uh, about 6 o'clock on the evening, sir. In other words, you have not earned after all the two hours that you have claimed, right? Yes, sir. Miss Witness, you have testified today that you have not earned anything from Mary Auntie. That is a contradictory statement, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Any more, Fiska? Nothing further. It can be noted in the foregoing scene that the scope of cross-examination are 1. As to any matter stated in the direct examination. 2. Any matter connected therewith. 3. As to the accuracy and truthfulness and freedom of the witness from the interest or bias or the reverse and four upon all important facts bearing upon the issue in the course of the case the arresting or the apprehending officer was called to the witness stand for a cross-examination by the collaborating defense counsel mr witness there is a commanding officer in the unit right yes ma'am And you would also agree with me that the commanding officer would be the one to determine if the operation revived us already, right? Objection, Your Honor. This was not taken on direct examination. He said he was the one who arranged with Stardust. So we object with the line of questionings. I am in close examination, Your Honor. Objection overall. Witness may answer the question. It is our commanding officer, ma'am, Your Honor. Likewise, in determining in this particular case, your commanding officer will be the one to decide of the bypass operation in which the accused, Zingboy Ho, is it not? Yes, ma'am. Also, Mr. Witness, would you agree with me? that the commanding officer will be the one to determine with the two 500 peso bill along with the budol money will be placed in a fluorescent powder. Is it not? I object, Your Honor. I think the commanding officer will be the best witness on this line of questionings. I would like to be clarified. During the direct examination that you lied to the accused when you said that you are a drug pusher was run out of stuff. Yes, Your Honor. Why do you say so? Why did you lie to the accused and say that you are a drug pusher? With due respect to the Honorable Court, I object because in that case, this Honorable Court will now be assuming. If the court in the exercise of its duty and in order to find out the truth can ask clarificatory questions. Witness, please answer. Well, yes, Your Honor. Um, in order that I could buy from him drugs, Your Honor. That's just that's just it, Your Honor. 
And lastly, Mr. Lopez, why did you affect the arrest of Mr. Tanki? This was because of the shabu that he was bringing, ma'am. And when was that? This was last October 24, 2019, between 6 to 9 in the evening, ma'am. Was that after the fact that you handled the bottled money to the accused? Objection, Your Honor. The fact in the last question, he stated negative to the answer, and I closed my examination. It was answered contrary to the answer of the accused. Objection overruled. Witness me answer. Not yet. When he was able to bring it to me and, you know, hand it to me, and I open it, that's the time that I gave the model money. And that's just it, Your Honor. Any more of this time? I raise my case, Your Honor. The court may ask questions. One, to clarify itself on certain points. Two, to call the attention of counsel to points at issues that are overlooked. Three, to direct counsel to questions on matters to elicit facts and clarify ambiguous answers. However, the questioning by the court should not be confrontational, probing, and insinuating. It should not be partisan and not overextensive. The court is not to assume the role of an advocate or prosecutor. With that said, here are the consequences of cross-examination. First, we learned that if the opponent was never given the opportunity to cross-examine a witness, the direct testimony may, on motion of the opponent, be stricken off as heresy. Second, all assertions of facts not based on the personal knowledge of the witness may also be stricken off as hearsay since the source cannot be subjected to the opportunity of cross-examination. In the foregoing case, the court finds the accused guilty beyond reasonable doubt. No.